What happens when two cloud-chasing YouTubers discover an abandoned house underwater? A. They die. B. He dies. C. She dies. Or D. Leave a comment with your prediction. Here's a hint. Please, Tina, wait for me here. In this video, we follow a couple on their journey through a possessed underwater house, look at the sheer number of red flags they choose to ignore, and figure out better ways on how to beat the water zombies in the deep house. Tina and Ben are YouTube explorers, traveling all around the world, film spooky places and comment on their experiences while trying to achieve their dream of 1 million views. Typically, they explore abandoned mansions, play jokes on each other and have a really good time. Their next target, however, will change everything they have ever worked on. The goal is to reach a legendary underwater house at the bottom of a pristine lake somewhere in France. But when they get there, the untouched nature-loving couple finds this. Let's be honest here, there is nothing worse than hyperactive children whose parents don't understand the implications of white sugar in the morning. And if you, on top of that, are a nature-loving purist that really enjoys untouched nature and uninterrupted quality time, chances are you become a child-eating villain instead. Our characters almost call off their plan but get approached, luckily, by a random middle-aged man that tells them about a very secluded section of the lake where no one ever goes to. Sounds good. Look, I love people inviting me to secret places when I'm on a solo trip. I mean, nothing ever comes close to this thrill of novelty and adventure, but let's not pretend like that this isn't how murders happen all the time. Granted, our characters are two people, this is France, and the middle-aged man isn't all that creepy, if we ignore the menacing bloodthirsty stare, of course. Duh, red flag number one. Once arrived, I would tell my partner that I feel incredibly uneasy and that I want to turn around ASAP. I would insist. Gut feelings are there for a reason and if you choose to ignore them at the wrong time, well, it's game over because you only need to be killed once. Anyway, our characters prepare their gear and my first reaction was, wow, that's pretty professional. I might have underestimated them a bit. Also, how are you able to afford this without hitting a million views on YouTube? I mean, they literally got an underwater drone equipped with a floodlight. That's pretty sick. They get ready and disappear in the water. A short while later, and despite the cloudiness of the water, they find this massive mansion submerged at the bottom of the lake. It's unbelievable. How is this house so well preserved? According to the legend, this house has been down here for decades, yet it looks to be in a very good shape. The alga covering major parts of the house make total sense, but somehow every single door of the house is locked. Not just locked, but literally barricaded with metal plates. The only entrance they find is at the very top through a narrow round-shaped window. Let me share some of my thoughts here. The idea to explore the house with the drone first is superb. But why would you enter just a minute afterwards? That doesn't make any sense. That literally eradicates the drone's purpose. They should send in the drone while staying outside or even better, above the water. That way they can get a sense of how big this house is and how cluttered the interior happens to be. Diving can be incredibly dangerous, but cave diving is where most dive accidents happen. If I were them, I would do it more like this. I would swim over the house first to get a bird's eye view. This allows me to understand the blueprint of the house. Then I would swim all around the house to make sure that there are other entries and exits available. If there is only one, which is the case in this movie, then I wouldn't enter without a solid plan to ensure my safety and orientation. Once I have mapped out the house, my oxygen levels would likely be low already, and that is completely fine. I would resurface again, get back to my van and enjoy a beautiful lakeside camp for tonight. You see, people die mostly due to the lack of preparation and skills. Taking your time on an underwater cave dive is very important. And if you want to create meaningful content and want to have a positive time, it shouldn't matter whether you finish in a day or two. Of course, none of that is what our characters do, which is red flag number two. They underestimate and rush this dive. They head straight in without any idea what to expect. And sure enough, the interior is cluttered as hell. It doesn't matter how big your oxygen tank is, if you become stuck, it's over. They make their way through and try to capture as many spooky shots as possible. And sure enough, once they find the children's bedroom, what they find is crazy. We got cute little satanic symbols ingrained on freaky baby puppets and dozens of children photos hanging on dead animal skulls. Must have been a happy family. 
There are two kinds of people out there. Those that disappear and leave right at this moment, and those that are only just getting started. Leave a comment to which group you belong, let's see how crazy we all are. Our characters don't leave, duh. It's their job to find and film exactly these type of things. So Ben is thrilled, at least until he sees a human shadow behind a piece of linen. He freaks out and therefore freaks out his girlfriend as well. That's bad. You see, unproportioned emotional response to any sort of threat or danger is the worst thing you can do. Not only are you freaking out those around you, but you are also wasting a lot of energy. Which, particularly in this case, will lead to accelerated breathing, which will have you run out of oxygen faster than my lazy ass on a treadmill. That happens pretty quick, by the way. Now this shadow, being the third red flag, should have been enough to turn around and at least plan to come back another time. Or, even better, continue the exploration from the outside with the drone only. They continue, but the spooky stuff does not stop. They find bloody scratch marks behind the door, and just moments after, hear a sudden piano stroke, shocking them so much it's enough to add an extra layer of warmth around their waist area. I love the fact that Ben has a tactical knife, though. There is always a chance of facing an aggressive animal that you need to guard off. You can't afford to damage your gear. But the arguably biggest threat is becoming stuck somewhere, in which case this knife will also be a great tool. For some reason, however, call it excessive purchasing habits and use by watching dumb shit on the internet, I would have bought one of those epic harpoons. You know, just in case. But... Tina finds a hidden room behind a Jesus ornament. They enter the room and find the most shocking thing yet. A bunch of dead people hanging from the ceiling. Now, I don't know about y'all, but this should be the definitive point where you break off and get back up. I mean, of course, you will catch some views with shots like these, but we all know what happens when you take a selfie with dead people in it. It's not a good idea. The best case, even for the sake of clout, would be to resurface immediately, contact the local police and retain the quasi-monopoly of your footage. Not only will you be able to utilize the local media exposure for your social media game, but you will also be the only one to ever have captured these scenes. So staying down there is really a bad idea no matter how you look at it. Plus, the red flags so far are pretty prominent. Satanic house? Check. Wallpaper with missing children photos? Check. Strange occurrences? Check. Dead people hanging from chains behind a Jesus gatekeeper of a secret room? Check. It's time to leave, friends. It's time to leave. But, unfortunately, another door opens itself before they can depart, leading to the most iconic and infamous line in horror history. Please, Tina, wait for me here. No, Ben, I, I don't think this is how that works. I think you will not just go and have a look. You will be pulled into the darkness while I have to endure your excruciating screams triggered by underwater zombies eating your heart. So please, if you will, let's, let's just go. But this version never happened nor did he get bitten by zombies. Instead, the couple turned around, quickly went back up to where they came from and found a freshly layered brick wall in front of the window. Tina freaks out and hyperventilates, the worst thing you can do underwater. There are only two ways on how this brick wall got there. Either it is indeed a glitch in the matrix, or someone has laid those bricks while they were investigating the interior. But since we have been following them, we know that they haven't been in here for a very long time. And since mortar joints, the concrete you use in between bricks, can be waterproof, it means that in theory, this brick wall could exist. But it's also true that mortar joint takes a long time to dry, at least longer than 30 minutes. Since our characters haven't been in here for more than 30 minutes, they would be able to disjoint those bricks using their knife and other sharp objects to loosen up the concrete. They quickly give up though and try to find another way out. And here it comes. Had they scouted the house from all sides before entering, they would know that there is no other exit. And had they only used their drone to explore the house, they would have collected the almost exact same footage as they have now without being trapped. They may not have had the dead bodies on film because Jesus was standing in their way, but they would have found the wall plastered with all those creepy missing children photos, which would have been enough to reach a million views. But all of that didn't happen, did it? And now our characters are stuck inside a haunted house on the bottom of a lake, which, if we're honest, is a pretty stupid situation to be in. They try to break through the windows and doors, but can't make any progress. Then, suddenly, Tina sees a fish swimming by and realizes that if there is a fish in here, there must be a way out. For once, a smart observation. 
The fish swims back into the secret chamber where they find multiple exits, but obstructed by metal bars. Impossible to get out. Before they can come up with an idea, Tina starts hallucinating, telling Ben to turn off the music, which he doesn't even hear. Then he disappears and she is viciously attacked by the corpses from before. This continues for a few moments until she snaps out of it and realizes that the bodies are still there. And according to Ben, nothing ever happened. It was all in her head. You see, fighting zombies is one thing. Fighting underwater zombies is another thing. But fighting imaginary zombies is on a whole different level. For that, I think you need DMT, acid, the skill of lucid dreaming, and then being able to form imaginary lightsabers to slay down the evil beings of your subconscious realm. Luckily, Ben pulls away the torture masks of those corpses and awakes the zombies so that they can fight them in the physical realm. Great job, Ben. Way to go. They turn around and speed away, trying to gain as much distance as possible. Due to the water and the non-existent zombie duck feet, those zombies are really slow. So slow that in fact our couple can reach the living room and escape through the chimney. For once a very smart idea. But this route should have been taken before awakening the zombie couple, right? They try to swim up as fast as possible, but for some reason the chimney collapses and separates both characters. Now, I am not sure how a chimney can collapse without leaving an opening in the roof, but according to this movie, it's possible. Not only are both separated now, but they are still trapped inside this house with zombies trying to make new friends. There are only three ways on how this can go. You either get killed by the zombies, suffocate because you run out of oxygen, or you find an exit. At this point, an exit is still unknown, and with zombies playing hide and seek with you, managing to scout an exit is virtually impossible. This means you must inevitably kill those zombies first. But killing zombies doesn't make any sense because they are already dead, so that would be stupid. Instead, we have to stop them, and this is easiest done by trapping them. The advantage is the fact that they are really slow and not very strong because of the surrounding water. So all that is necessary is to lure them into a room with only one door and trap them in. Another idea easier than that would be to keep them at bay by actively pushing them away with a long item to avoid being bitten. The obvious goal is to keep them somewhere locked or stuck to allow you the time to find an exit without having to fear a biting zombie around every corner. Remember the chains where they were casually hanging from? Well, these are great ways to incapacitate them. Even zombies are subject to the laws of physics, right? If we can attach enough weight to their bodies, they would just sink to the ground without the chance of ever getting away from there. The two characters are completely on their own. Both struggle and before Ben faces off a zombie, he finds a wall with a family tree on it. It shows Sirius Black. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. But it shows that Pierre, the middle-aged man from the beginning, was the son of this zombie couple and involved in the kidnapping of all these children who have been abused, mutilated and killed in this house while being recorded. Which is some sick stuff. But anyway, Ben encounters a zombie and before we know what is happening to him, we cut to a panicking Tina. It takes a short while until they find each other again, but then Ben sounds like this. I'm better now. Okay. I don't know what's happening, but I feel better now, said no possessed person ever, my friends. But the tone in his voice and the blank stare obviously mean nothing good. If I were Tiny Tina here, I would take his knife, smash it into his throat, took his oxygen tank, and used that one to break through the walls. Here's the reasoning for that. If you can't get out of this house, then everything is pointless. You will suffocate as soon as your oxygen runs out. If you don't suffocate, that means the zombies will kill you first. In case you do manage to trap, kill or stop them, which is unlikely but possible, you will still die unless you find an exit. Ben lures her into a trap and tries to ambush her with another zombie. Tina is able to flee but can't get very far. A fight breaks out and Tina stabs Ben into the shoulder, which triggers Ben to become lucid again and both of them try to escape one more time. But Ben is pulled backwards into the darkness while Tina is struggling to resurface again in time. Due to the lack of oxygen and likely occurring decompression sickness because this was a pretty deep lake, she dies before she can make it. What is the moral of the story? Well, don't go cave diving for clouds. Alright, if you want to know which epic death game is deadlier, Alice in Borderland or Squid Game, then you should check out this video right here. The best one we have ever created. It's a lot of fun. Let me know what you think. With that said, I thank you for watching. Take care and peace.